In this episode of Redefine, we sit down with commercial photographer and video tutorial creator Mark Wallace. He shares the pretty fascinating road he took to build his career, which included producing years of morality plays nationwide, several bouts of hospitalization due to flat out exhaustion, and all kinds of awesome hairstyles. Also, Mark faces the flash round and he opens up about some of his favorite gear and his technical pet peeves. Special thanks to our sponsors Adorama, the photography people, and T1 Line, the voice and data solution experts. Thank you so much for joining us today at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. We are here with Mr. Mark Wallace. Yay! <laughs> who's very enthusiastic. Started shooting when? 1987. 1987. Yeah. When you were like four. I mean, 97. I'm not that old. <laughs> are you kidding? Yeah, yeah when I was doing, two. You, know, you were doing both simultaneously? Because so, a lot of photographers who here, were. Let me tell you the timeline, yeah. and then I'll tell you why we stand there. Give it to me. So, in 1987, a friend of mine named Davy Fisher and I started. Uh, traveling and touring all over the United States and performing. Right. Actually, John Sanko was another guy. Anyway, we, uh, at that time, I... Performing what? We were doing dramas to help uh, teenagers. We were teenagers ourselves, but we thought we were better teenagers. Right. Um, like morality plays. Like, you yes, don't, yes, you yes, don't yes, have right. to kill yourself. Yes. And here's why. Here's hope. And you yes. can get you know, counseling and all kinds of stuff. So, Good and stuff. we were... Changing the world stuff. Yeah. Yes. Trying to life-changing things. So we were yes. at churches and we were at camps and we were at uh, national parks and schools and we worked with kids and teenagers and college students. And so what we decided to do is we would take pictures and we had this huge rear screen and we had slide projectors all controlled by computer and we would write plays and uh, we had switches and stuff hidden on the set that we built. How old were you? And, um, 18, 19. Okay. Um, so anyway, we would turn stuff on and off and then this big screen would come up and sound would come in and we, we animated ourselves on slides. I was traveling about 40 plus weeks a year, like gone, gone. Yeah. Um, that doesn't bode well for any personal life. life. Right. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I came back to Phoenix, that's where I lived, yes. and uh, left that whole world and said, now what do I do? Because right. my training is in theater and in photography and in video and... So I'll join and tell. I heard an ad on the radio that said, you can make $60,000 if you know how to write ASP.net software. That was before .net. Yeah. Uh, software. And I'm like, whoa, $60,000. That is like, like, that's multimillionaire in my thinking at that time. So after about three years at Intel, I said, I'm going bonkers. I need a creative outlet. And Diane and I had just been dating for a little while. Uh -huh. And we said, let's start a studio. And we did. And that was Snap Factory. And that was what year? That was 2004. Okay. 2004. Um, and then... What happened was the creative outlet became uh, a full-time job. And so I was working over 100 hours a week. Oof. And I did that from 2005 to 2009 ah. with no breaks. So you can really relate to the people that are working the full-time job and doing mm -hmm. the studio. Yeah. Yeah. And so fortunately, Intel paid really well. And so I took a lot of that money and invested it in uh, studio lighting and gear, Perfect. cameras, yes. stands, all that stuff that people think that people just give me no I right. actually bought that right. and bought all that stuff with hard with yeah. yeah I went to the hospital three times for exhaustion Dude. just there's a pattern I'm sensing a pattern yes here. so okay. work 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 yeah. really hard and so um, you know after that was done in 2009 I finally said enough is enough right. and so I cashed all of my retirement and we took all of our savings and we stuck it in a bank account and uh, we said, well, I hope this works. And I heard on NPR about this thing called YouTube. And this was in 2007. Radio has really been good for your career. <laughs> yes, I know. So I'm hearing about this thing NPR. YouTube. Yeah, they're yeah. like, YouTube. It was like, I'm Ira Glass. And this week we're talking about what? I'm like, oh, wow. Um, and so I was shooting some catalogs and stuff. And uh, I thought, hey, let's put that on YouTube. And people watched it and liked it because it was girls in lingerie. Yeah. And then... That really does sell. It does. I, I don't care what people say. It sells. Mm -hmm. uh, Studiolighting.net called Diane and said, uh -huh. hey, we'd like a husband and wife to be interviewed for our light source photography podcast. Right. And Chase Jarvis had been on the week before us. And we thought, that's really cool. We could yeah. be in the same thing as Jarvis. Yeah. And so we were on, and they, after we got done, we just hit it off with Bill and Ed, and they said, hey, we want you to do uh, some of these videos for us about studio lighting, and digital photography one-on-one -on -one was born. And then uh, from those videos, Abraham Steinberg at Adorama had already been thinking about 
he's not crazy. Yes. He'd been thinking about... <laughs> he was just going crazy. He was thinking about this thing called Adorama TV, and he was looking for people, and he saw those videos, and he called me. Yes. And I said, sounds great. I flew to New York. We worked for about six months to develop the program, and then we launched. And launched. And, and it was then, a lot of like, uh, we'll see how this goes. No idea. Yeah. See, I think this is really interesting because a lot of people know you mostly as that guy. Yeah. That guy on YouTube. So that you after know, just, just the, the path here, bam, I showed up. Yeah. And it's like, no, it started in the late 80s. I had a question come in. Um, I mentioned that we were going to be interviewing. Someone wanted to know, what are your personal goals next? Personal goals, non-photography goals. Personal goals. Spend more time at my house with my wife and dogs. Okay. Number one. Number one. Yeah, that's number one. Um, travel yeah. more. Oh, but that doesn't really work. And that would <laughs> be great. I know, but no, together. <laughs> I like, like my dream house. is to take my dogs and my wife and get like one of those insanely large gas guzzling bus tour bus, yeah, like the flash bus tour kind of yeah, bus, yeah, yeah. buses. And I would like to just travel all over the United States and not go to, I mean, I, I love big cities, yeah. but I love little towns like Jordan, Montana better. I've seen most of America. I haven't seen the Northeast. Yep. And so I'm talking to my friend Dave Schmidt, and we are hopefully going to hop on our motorcycles and ride up the New England coast and all over this fall. Yeah. And we're going to invite a bunch of friends and family to just join us. Yep. So if you're a motorcycler, come with us. There's um, room for you. If you're a motorcycler, come <laughs> join the Mark <laughs> Wallace Motorcycle room. Tour. Um, no, but we just want to go and... Things. Yeah, and I haven't yeah. had a vacation in years. Yeah. Oh, the last vacation. You have a pace. You have a pace to your work life right now. Yeah, it's too much. It is. And so we're trying to scale that down. Um, fortunately, I have Kelsey and Michael and Matt and Diane and yeah, Aaron. Yeah, a good crew. What's next for you professionally? Professionally, what I would like to do, um, there are lots of things. Because so, you do a lot outside of, a lot of people, you know, on Adorama TV, you know you, obviously, you mm -hmm. do a lot with Digital 101. But you do a lot outside of that with shooting and mm -hmm. workshops and instruction. Yeah, so um, Adorama is, is phenomenal because they allow us to do videos, tons of videos. They provide gear and equipment and funding and that stuff. Um, and so it's just, it's a blessing every day. Mm. The thing that is difficult about that blessing, though, is that the way that people see my work is in context of tutorial videos. Right. And the heart of my artistic self is I love to help people. And so, uh, one of our philosophies at Snap Factory is local, person to person. That's what things. Sh that's what one should on happen. One. one on one. Yeah. <laughs> See how that works. Mm -hmm. So we exist because we believe that we need to make the world a better place, and we think that we can make the world a better place by actually having dialogue with people in real time, locally, and then from there, then maybe we can do some things globally that are good. But as cliche as it is. If you don't have a group of people that you sit down with and have conversations with on a regular basis, then you need to add that to your life. Yeah. Well, I mean, it starts at home. That, that's always yeah. been true, whatever your home is. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, and I think that uh, that's a great point because part of what's great about social media is it connects you to more people, but it does it in a very shallow, abbreviated manner right. as opposed to connecting. And I think a good argument could be made that it doesn't connect you. Yeah. It just makes you aware of how inadequate you are. <laughs> as, as we were talking about earlier, it gives you this complex of, I'm, I can't compete with, you know, somebody else that has so many more followers and so many yeah. more likes and so many more things. Which is hilarious because people will hear you say that and say, what are you talking about? You know? Yeah. And there's always something, there's always someone who's like, more or, yeah. Yeah, it's and exhausting. it's a losing game. Well, I was going to do something new, which was um, a flash round. You have to answer as soon as you hear the question. You can't okay. think, you can't yes. deliberate, and Blue. if your answer is not completely... 32. If your answer is not completely what you had hoped for it to be, you can quickly correct at the end if you want to. Okay. Or keep in this. All right. Two favorite lenses. 24 to 70, 2.8L, and my 70 to 200. Dream camera you'd buy if money were no object. The brand new Canon. Which one? 1DX? The X, yeah, the 1DX. Canon, Nikon, Fuji, Sony. I shoot all of them. All and of so them. I have 22 You're cameras. Camera. I am multi, I'm poly camera. You're poly camera. Yeah, I'm very poly camera. <laughs> And so uh, I'm fortunate to have lots of cameras. I was going to say, and a lot of gear. GTL or manual? Manual. Speed light strobes or constant? Strobes, studio strobes. Favorite light modifier? Uh, Octabox, eight foot. Ooh, that's a nice one. Mm -hmm. Photoshop or Lightroom? Both. Favorite lipstick? Red. <laughs> Fight or flight? Fight. <laughs> <laughs> um, how much do you Photoshop things? 
rarely do I Photoshop things. I do lots of tonality changes in, in no, I do I do lots of stuff. I know this is lightning round, but this is my nine pet peeves. You can't get it right in the camera. You can. No, but to get blacks, absolutely black yeah. and whites, absolutely white, you can't do that in the camera unless you just have the right situation. And so what I do is I do tonality changes and color correction in Lightroom. Yep. And then if I have to do any skin corrections, then I just export it into Photoshop and then okay. and I do, do it there. Do you notice, by the way, because I talk to you often, that when you mention product names or some sort of instructional advice, your voice changes? No, does it really? Yes. Like when I say, can I do this? And then I go, in Lightroom. In Lightroom. It does. 4.0 beta. <laughs> you know, I do. Mark Wallace, the camera mode. <laughs> you do. Really? Listen, listen to this back. You'll see it. Okay. We're going to play it back. So what I do is I do tonality changes and color correction in Lightroom. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for sharing yeah. all that. That was actually very enlightening. I really appreciate I it. I feel like I just skimmed the surface. I mean, isn't that crazy? You did. We're going to have to release the anthology next. Next, it's the 12-part series. Mark Wallace travels the world and tells his soul. Mm. That's actually not your voice. <laughs> I know. All right, we're out. Thanks so much for the talk, Mark. Join us next time as we sit down with Twit Photo host and wedding and editorial photographer, Catherine Hall. In the meantime, though, get your gear organized with the Kata Mini B backpack. There are tons of compartments for cameras, lenses, small items, and your laptop. This very comfortable bag really does it all. Out on a shoot and the rain joins in, pop on the convenient rain cover. And at the end of the day, your shoulders and back will be so happy that it has an internal frame and cushion straps. You can buy the Kata Mini B at Adorama.com.